Hits and Crits. What's up, Hits and Crits family? Welcome back to the maybe, I guess, last episode of the game mode series. Um, today we will cover three game modes, um, namely uh, Here We Stand, Fire and Blood and Feast for Crows. Again, I'm uh, joined by Iceman and Larks and uh, we will go through the exact same procedure as we, did, uh, as we did before. We give you a summary, a general approach and uh, in one case we also give you a, visual, a visual, visualization of the whole uh, of the whole approach we we're thinking about. Um, yeah, so let's jump right in. If you have nothing, we will jump into Fire and Blood. So here we are with the summary and I feel, Daniel, it's a good way to start with you on the summary. Okay, great. <clears throat> Yeah, today we are covering um, yeah three probably less played game modes or less played um, for a reason because they are um, a little bit yeah they are special so to speak and they might not be the most balanced game modes and uh, Fire and Blood is a perfect example for this. It's a no objective game mode. Um, you have an 18 inches deployment zone, so things can get um, ugly real quick. You cannot, for this reason, um, place terrain closer to uh, closer than six inches to uh, any table edge, right? Because normally you cannot place terrain in deployment zones, and now your deployment zone is forwarded, so this rule is necessary. And then you are going to um, mark two units, like um, per player. And these units are the important units in this game mode because they are, on the one hand, worth two VP if they get killed, like additional VP that is important, like additional on top of the one that you get for victory through combat. And um, on the other hand, they gain an offensive buff permanently. This is a thing that you know from Clash of Kings that we covered during our last video. And if this marked unit or a marked unit kills an enemy, they score an additional VP also, though this goes both ways. And um, the game mode is then about these marked units um, most of the times. But on addi uh, um, in addition to this, your commander, when the commander unit activates, also can put out a VP on an enemy unit within 12 inches. So they have like additional victory points all over the place, basically, but no objectives, um, no classic objective that you can score from. And this makes this game mode special. And you have to adapt to the situation um, with your game plan and with your general approach. And that's um, that will be, yeah, probably now be um, covered by Iceman. Yeah, let's jump to it. But before we do with the general approach, I have one question. Is there mm -hmm. also sure. also on, on Fire and Blood, is there also some recommendation from your side what kind of commander slash list you would play? Um, I can imagine there's also a certain pick you have in mind when you say, I play Free Folk, I have to play fly, Fire and Blood. What is it? Um, yeah, for, for me, it's a, it's kind of flexible. I would rather look at the army and on my uh, NCU layout, we will cover this um, during our mm -hmm. general approach, um, because like your commander can either be um, in a supportive role and just dish out additional VPs and stack them on a unit that you are going to kill mm -hmm. later on, or yeah. you can do the same and kill the unit on your own if you're Gregor or, or, or who else, or if you're Mac in, in case of Free Folk. So um, I think um, regarding commanders, you are kind of flexible in Fire and Blood. That's my mm -hmm. opinion. Okay. Do you agree, Martin? Yeah, I think <clears throat> it's a little bit, Fire and Blood is a little bit uh, like Clash of Kings commander wise. You warriors are in favor here. Because, as you already said, Gregor can kill something on his own. Um, Mac can kill something on his own. And it's slightly better to have a warrior, a fighter, um, than a general. Okay. So let's jump into the general approach, Martin. 
Yeah, the general approach here is um, at first, because of the 18 inches uh, deployment zone, you need to think of your own thread ranges and of the thread ranges of your opponent. That's very important. Um, then you need to make the best use out of the bonus VP your commander can hand out. <clears throat> That's one key to win this year. Um, you need to be careful which unit you're going to mark uh, from your opponent and which unit from you is marked because sometimes your opponent marks unit from you as a bait and you think, haha, this unit is now very powerful because it has, let's say, thundering. Uh, but be aware of it's, its only offensive abilities and the defense will stay the same. Um, one more thing here also to look at is when I play 13 points in NCU and Daniel plays only 12 points or let's say eight or nine in case of Nightwatch. Oh no, it's 10 with Nightwatch and Gilly. Um, if there are no enemy units are destroyed and or you no units in total, he will win because he has more points in the table. So he's in favor and I need to do something. I need to be active, which can be very, very <clears throat> um, problematic because he can turtle up, he can run away and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, summary wise, I would say it's a fast game mode because it can be over with two units killed with uh, when a mark unit kills another mark unit, that's four points. And with the bonus points of your commander, you can kill two units and it can be 10, but it's a very swingy game mode. And I think this swingy stuff is because people say it's not our favorite game mode and it's hard to practice for this game mode and so on and so on. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah because of you don't know what your uh, uh, opponent's going to do with, with marking units, right? So exactly. that leads me to one question I have with this. Always when I play, can we say, like, I see a lot of people marking the weakest units across the table. I see that a lot, a lot happening, right? So you just pick whatever. You pick... Um, Poor you know, ra 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 raiders, poor fellows. You 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 mark something that you might might be able to to sh to yeah to shoot with a spear thrower. So, for example, right? So, um, is that a thing, or or is or does it really come down to what what your what what your what your army is? What what is it? Is it always the weakest? Is it <clears throat> is it a mix? What is it? Yeah, it depends, right? Because um, if you have easy targets. Let's say a solo unit that you can snipe with a scorpion or something. Go for it. Yeah. So easy to kill units is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but also you have to keep in mind that you don't want to mark the units that your opponent with a high chance will kill your unit with. So and, and this is a thing that you have to decide and judge on a case by case basis. Um, mm. I wouldn't mark an opponent's uh, stone thrower, for example, right? You wouldn't do that. Um, but let's say an offensive unit like a landscalf, you can do this because like, you know, they will charge, they will probably kill something. But if you are um, confident that you can kill them in return, it's still worth it because it's two points that you get, right? So if, if this is your game plan, lure a unit in, let them kill something, and then mm -hmm. you can kill them in return with final strike and whatever, uh, this might be worth it in my opinion, but it's, we'll it's very hard to answer in general. Yeah, would 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 still be for me when I hear that would 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 still be a little bit scary to mark a Tully calf with a glory seeker, uh, like like I would still be very 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 um, um, uh, cautious with that one. But um, you have to be cautious, yeah. Of, of yeah, of course, yeah, and also something <laughs> like get yourself um, some sort of reminder for the victory point that your commander can uh, can hand out. Seriously, mm -hmm. like. This is the, probably one of the most forgotten rules um, uh, in all game modes, um, and it's so important. Like, it, it, yeah, I, I can think of a couple of games that I they were so close, and I basically lost them because I forget in one round to put out a victory token. Um, if if you agree with your opponent that Absolutely. that you can um, take this, uh, do this later on, that's fine. But still, some sometimes, yeah. The situation changes and so on and so on and you should remember it and yes. it's not um on, on you to ask your opponent basically yeah, yeah it's yeah, a little Daniel's bit like right. sorry go, go yeah, ahead yeah, right i bought little explanation marks in red and blue and green and when we play fire and blood i put them next to my commander and i think they won me a lot of games <laughs> mm -hmm. from etsy 
Or what do you mean? No, uh, you, you... <laughs> thousands of years ago when I played 40k. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So a little bit like uh, Clash of Kings, right? Where you also have to remember when your commander activates, he can, you know, pull Sundering or put, right? So Similar, but, but not as important. Like, uh, the Clash of Kings is not as important. Here, the victory point is way more important than your unit having something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, but 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 I mean the trigger is the same, right? Yeah. In this game yes, mode, you, you have to think, hey, your commander unit activates, he can do something else than yeah. normally, right? So, or or um or or last time when we say uh, you can you can cycle cards, right? So all these games where you commander, mm -hmm. exactly. So your commander can basically activate, skip, and do something else out of it. Okay, is that anything on the general approach? Yeah, I think um, so. Mm -hmm. You think so? Yeah, that's anything. And and the special situation with turtling we will cover now in our um, demonstration. All right. Then let's go to this. So um, this is the situation. Um, the blue list is the Night's Watch list. We are in fire and blood here. And uh, it's not a list we just schemed out for this uh, demonstration or something. It's a list... Um, uh, basically designed by by Thomas Nachtalp, uh, which he played in tournaments and still still plays it, and uh, it's a defensive uh, shooty style army. The NCU layout is um, basically I think Donald and Gilly and and um, what's he yes. called Sam. So it's nine points, right? And that's what we talked about. He yep. can simply <clears throat> because normal NCU layout will at least be twelve, uh, because three NCU is uh, basically the meta. Um, or even uh, more points. So he can just deploy like this, and we will go into the details um, <clears throat> soon. Like and stay there and say, okay, if if we if you don't come to me, I will win um, because it's a draw, and then we go to t points on table, and I have more than you. So he can position in a way where, and, and he can even like during during the game uh, use the the scorpion to maybe snipe your solo or something, right? Um, this is comes in addition to it, and. Now you can uh, deploy your units carefully so that each unit can only be charged from one enemy unit. Like if you can maybe click it, um, you can click on the red units um, and um, then uh, you can uh, realign them. So to, to make this clear, uh, click on the... Yeah, there's no, there's click, no way you here. You can click on the, the, green, uh, the green square. Oh, okay. So, so, the front, there, yeah. so there's so no way... So this is overlapping, right? This is um, stakes. Yeah. Uh, the other, um, the unit uh, with Othel um, in the top right corner uh, is blocked by the... Um, by the edge. By the, there, by by the, the edge, right? Yeah. And, um, and down there, he also brings a unit with him um, with the, uh, that can play stake. So even um, yeah, you are here. even covered in stakes down there, right? The, so The senior builder. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a senior builder. Exactly, yeah, yeah. and you have um, you have spaces for your range units to shoot, and it's really, really not easy to to break into such a formation uh, without uh, losses. And um, yeah, Night's Watch is not as tanky anymore as it was, but it still still can be very defensive and very tough to break through. And um, this is something you should simply be aware of if you see if you go into fire and blood and you see that your opponent has um, less NCUs uh, than you then you should be aware of these tactics because in tournaments, people will um, not do the the yeah most ch chivalry or sportsman-like thing. They will do what lets them win, right? And this is, uh, you cannot accuse them for this. So this yeah. might might come up and that's why we think this game mode is not particularly well designed for tournaments um, because it's not, in, in the end, it's not a funny situation for, for both the players. True. But it's still in the recommended game mode section, right? It is. Yeah. Okay, which brings me to our to our our next game mode, which is my personal and I'm being sarcastic now, my personal favorite of all the games except <laughs> Banners and Butchery, right? Except Banners and Butchery. Yeah. That's a different it's story. Yeah. Th 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 that's an all-time favorite, but 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 that's a different story, but now here is my favorite game mode. Here we stand, and here we are with uh, the summary on Here We Stand. Martin, please guide us through my most favorite game mode. Yeah, yeah. I think I only know two people who like this game mode. It's you and my friend Hans, uh, but he loves it really uh, without sarcasm. So 
<laughs> yeah. I oh man. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, here we stand as a no objective game mode. You also have 18 inches of deployment zone. Terrain is the same, like fire and blood. And you're scoring by controlling the four quadrants. You need to have more points in it, starting from round two. Um, and you need to have at least four po uh, five points in it. Um, and if your unit is on the line between one and two squares, your opponent decides in which... Uh, quadrant the unit is mm, and great. NCUs have a special ability here um, they can forfeit to uh, take a zone on the tactic board and uh, if they are doing this they can place themselves in one of the four quadrants only one friendly and one enemy NCU per quadrant and you need to be aware of the board must be open so if the board is closed then the activation is lost but we would recommend and uh, it's like Chris is going first, he plays one NCU, I plays one NCU, Chris plays another NCU, then normally I need to pass. And with my passing here, I'm putting, let's say, whatever, Catelyn Stark into one of the quadrants. So my activation is not lost and I have to do it anyway. Yeah. Um, and we can keep playing. That's basically the summary of our most favorite game mode. <laughs> but still, but still, that cost me the game in Poland, right? When we went to Hegemonalia, first round was Here We Stand. And I was like, oh man, that's my fav most favorite game mode. That's great, right? So so we started in, and exactly exactly this, exactly what, I, what, what Martin just said, cost me the game because I um, failed twice to do exactly this. When passing with the NCU, I didn't put it in the right quadrant. So in the end, I lost by, I, I, I guess it was one, oh, was it one victory point? So yeah, so that, that, that was not, not, not fun. Made, made me love this game mode even more. Um, yeah. But yeah. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, you wanted something to add, uh, Mar uh, Daniel? Uh, no, I think we can, we can go on. Okay, let's go to general approach then. Um, yes, here we go. Yeah, once again, uh, think of threat ranges because 18 inches means you can get shot by swords uh, round one. This is something to definitely bear in mind. Um, obviously, do your, uh, yeah, you either are a natural talent in, in, in being good at uh, math in your head or maybe bring a calculator, you know, typing in. Yeah. Because, Check Varus. Yeah, because seriously, um, this is an additional mental load um, that's, that's kind of a burden on you because um, when you see it played, uh, there are many opportunities and possibilities that you have to calculate through in a way. And um, this might be, for me at least, I feel it a little bit tiring, um, especially during the later rounds of a tournament. Uh, also, when you bring your list, that's not, no point on our slide here, but uh, when you bring your list, you might want to think about bringing a list with uh, five point NCU if you have one or six point, because that's obviously very strong because they can claim a quadrant on their own because uh, there's this five point threshold. So a four point NCU cannot claim an objective uh, in a quadrant on its own. Mm. So that's something to, to think about. And other than that, seriously, um, yeah, if you would, if you would pass, you know, Chris told his uh, told his story already, and then try to be sneaky, like use something like tech repo to bring yourself uh, in a position where you could, uh, like, during the last turn or something, um, change the quadrant to 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 just get ahead of your opponent and then maybe play from there because it can be a very, from my experience, a very static game mode where both opponents just sit in there. Uh, side of the table basically and this is not not fun or you try to just ignore the game mode for for some time and try an offensive game plan to overwhelm your opponent and then later on play the mission or something but other than that that it's really hard to give general guidance i feel yeah i think we missed the point that your commander is worth three more points in the uh, summary yeah. Yeah, True. that's uh, something you need to be aware of. And the reason why this game mode is close to unfair, I would say, are things like um, New Marcel and Friedman or Balon, who can respawn slash uh, spawn new units. And against Greyjoy, it's pretty tough. They 
uh, fire your silent men and you they kill something then the silent men are gone and then Balon brings them back and there's basically nothing you can do against it or let like the, the uh, oh what's the word the new freedman um, mm. then uh, the Targaryen can have three or six more points more than you and that makes it very very hard and unfair and I think that's mostly the reason uh, this game mode is not very played and not very favorite in the community from my perspective of and we have to also correct because um fire and blood is not in the official uh, tournament ah, okay. it's removed oh, it's not got okay re got removed but um here we stand is <laughs> so okay. so here we stand is <laughs> yeah oh that's a relief um, okay great yeah <laughs> all right i'm not sure which one i would play rather yeah <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't know. No. I guess I, I I would play Fire and Blood, uh, Blood to be honest. If yeah, it's more I, fun I, at least. Uh, yeah, exactly. It, it's at least more fun, right? Um, yeah, okay. Right. All right. So that brings me to a game mode, which is actually quite fun to play, mm -hmm. which is uh, Feast for Crows. All right, Martin. Summary on Feast for Crows. <clears throat> okay, here we go. So Feast for Crows is uh, the only two objective game mode in the game. And the corpse piles, uh, the game modes are placed into corpse piles left and right. Um, uh, claiming and touching and losing this objective is the same like in Dance with Dragons. You need only to touch them. If you fail a panic test, then you uh, lose the token. If you fail a panic attack in close combat, the token moves to your opponent. If your opponent has more rank than you, um, after an attack, he will get the token. You have a normal 10-inch um, deployment zone. And this is what this game mode makes interesting comes now. The first two infantry units who are destroyed will generating two more um, corpse piles with two more tokens on it. So it moved from a two to a three, or let's say even a four uh, objective game mode. And when I can I lose a unit, I can place this corpse pile. I will do it obviously in my favor. So maybe back next to one of my units. And this makes this game mode very, very tricky. And we said uh, that for Feast for Crows is a very slow game mode because um, you only have the two um, points at the start, and basically one goes left, one goes right, and then somebody has to do the move. And if there is no move, then the game will be end five to five. Yeah, so good game mode for a stone thrower. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's it's uh, it's important to say you need to place this uh, additional corpse pile fully within long yeah. range of the of the of the um, killed infantry unit which brings me to one point we discussed before uh, a lot of times in games when i place feast for crows a lot of um yeah. um uh, yeah we were not sure like in the past if you have to place this token this objective token need does it need to be fully with like on the corpse pile or can you just touch it but we clarified this so it can also just touch it if you lose it, right? So when you place it within fully with, within full range, you place it in the middle, right? Yes, right yep. in the middle. But then and after well, someone a new objective, exactly a new objective on it. But when someone picks that up and you fail it, or or also with the with the um, with panic the corpse files that are already yeah. there, if you fail it by a panic test, your opponent can move it somewhere, even just touching the corpse pile, yeah, yeah. so it does not. Exactly. Just just saying that because, like in my in my past, that all, all it, it it led to confusion sometimes, right? But it, it's also enough to just touch it, not yeah yeah. And if I might add something, like also you, it's so common uh, when you're focused in tournaments. I, I see this. Uh, I, I would guarantee if there's a is a there's, if there's a tournament round um, of feast for crows there are players forgetting to place the corpse prior yeah. if their unit die. Like, and this is, yeah, it, it's really bad if, if you realize this one or two um, yep. rounds later. So later, you yeah. got to make sure that you think of it. It's only infantry. That's something um, you can make use of. We will cover this. 
yeah. um, right now. But yeah, that's definitely um, something you shouldn't forget because it's very essential to this game mode. Absolutely. So what's what, what else is essential? General approach, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we have an even number of objectives. As, as Martin said, it can be very static because um, yeah, either a player just grabs basically one side and then you are standing there and you know somebody has to make the first move, which you can mm -hmm. do. Um, you should then maybe think of a tempo play, so choose a round for your action where you can go last and then first, right? Um, but what this means is that the press pressure is on the player with less points on the table. It's basically the same situation that you have in Fire and Blood. This, is, this can arise. Um, so if you're uneven in uh, NCUs slash points on the table, um, you might find yourself under pressure or you can use it because you can say, okay, I have um, less points in NCU, more points on the table. So I know my opponent has to come, has come to me. So that's... Um, uh, yeah, yeah, you should you should analyze this um, before the game and um, adjust your game plan. And it's it's tricky, as Martin says, because in you should really think about which unit you kill or um, get. Yeah, yeah, let your opponent kill. It might be even like back in the days when you had the old um, the old uh raiders that didn't give give vps away right you know the insignificant raiders it was a common thing to just stick a raider unit to your opponent and um, you could even uh, sometimes place the stakes and kill them so that you generate a cost pile on your own for you and then um, win the game from there and it's still a viable strategy to maybe send an infantry unit do some damage and let let's it get killed so that you can place a cost pile in a favorable position for you and then you will win if your opponent doesn't get active from there. So this is something to to really, which which, which this game mode is really about choice of targets. Um, if you uh, want to be aggressive on your opponent, maybe try to kill the cavalry, the monsters, the solos, uh, but not the infantry infantry units if you can. And other yeah. than that, that's basically that's basically it, I think. Mm, that's basic. But but still, again, my question comes around with: uh, Is there are there fa favorite commanders when we talk in clusters, like we're talking about aggressive, defensive, and uh, you know, tactical tactical mm -hmm. commanders or like influence commanders? Um, so what is it here? What is it in Feast for Crows for you slash or for you both? And uh, especially when we talk uh, lists too, like commander and list. So Martin, go ahead. Uh, yeah, the best commander in this game mode obviously is Marcelin because he can bring his uh, freedmen, and the Targaryen player can let them die on purpose. And it's an infantry he... solo, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's an infantry solo. Uh, he can uh, bring one in round one or two. He can let them die on purpose, and then he can place a corpse pyre for himself. And then uh, it's two to one for the Targaryen player. So that's Marcelin's mission. He's uh, I think because of this mechanic, he's way ahead uh, of other commanders. And this one, I think, makes this game mode a little bit unfair for House Targaryen in comprehension to other um, other houses. But when it comes to <clears throat> general commanders, yeah, I would say cavalry commanders are good here because you can uh, fire them at your um, opponent. They are not bringing... Um, corpse piles, and also I would go. But that's a disadvantage, right? Like I, I, I would leave my calf at home, my calf list. It depends. I would say one unit to break the lines could be worth it, maybe. Okay, okay, but full calf might no, have no, a problem, no, no, right? not full calf. No, yeah. only, only one, one unit of calf with the calf commander. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, on, but in general, I think um, here you need commanders who can deal some damage, so I would go again with the Greyjons, the Victarions, the Gregors of this game. I personally would take like defensive commanders, because my strategy would be like, yeah, as I said, sacrifice one unit and play a defensive game from there, and then you can uh, really profit from something like Steyr with um, also, if you have cards that let you auto-pass panic, is very nice here. Um, and 
yeah, basically, because basically also the same things that we uh, talked about in Dance with Dragons apply, right? Um, you can crown zap a unit and it uh, loses a token and so on and so on. And uh, if, if you can pull this off, that you get a two to one advantage, then the defensive commander might be interesting. Yeah. But you can obviously also go for a steamroll. And, uh, you know, because if you if you kill one unit, that's that's bad. You have to then press, uh, pressure, at, uh, yeah, keep the pressure high, press yeah. on, and, and really um, follow up. Because otherwise, you you won't. Yeah, you, you got one VP from this, and uh, your opponent basically five, four, or whatever, depending yeah. on the round you kill the unit. Yeah, totally. I think the the great the greatest successes I had was let's you know put the stone thrower away for a little bit. But the the greatest <laughs> successes I had were with um, uh, Geor commander because he's quite defensive, right? Especially through what what is it night gathers. Uh, where you yeah. can just die from 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 wounds, right? Not not mm -hmm. panic test. So he basically passes panic all the time, um, and with his cards. So I, I, my 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 play style or my strategy in the past was also e e yeah more more of a defensive style. So which which summarizes it for me. It really comes down to what you like to play and when you, what you can play best, right? So when you when 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 you feel confident to rush through your opponent, right? And and uh, it doesn't matter that you kill an infantry unit early and you can get all the rest, you know, do yeah. it. But exactly. like for me, for me, um, it, it it well, at least for now, it it, it will also be like some, some someone Donal, awful Geor, maybe I would, for, especially with Night's Watch, you wouldn't pick, uh, uh, you wouldn't pick John or Cotter or something, um, but also with other with other factions, I yeah, would probably also stick to defensive. But it yeah, yeah. it really comes down and, to playstyle. And, and really, really like if you um, if you choose the aggressive route, like go down, go fully down, and um, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, follow it through, yes. and don't don't stop your aggression. <laughs> don't stop your aggression mm -hmm. so that's uh, that, that's a good word uh because today uh germany will play against spain so we also uh need to be <laughs> a friendly like, match yeah. let's see a friendly a friendly match so 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 for us for us uh, we will all sit uh in front of the TV later, later, later today. But that was a great episode. I really feel we we covered a lot of ground on the game modes. So uh, I think um, when I can leave you guys after this game mode series with something, uh, as you have seen in the comments and on Discord, we are very eager to pick up your recommendations, your you know your your wishes, what you want to see next. So we we have in the plans something like on uh, charging and objectives and and also uh, targeting. But if you feel like any other thing should be covered, uh, you want your banish and butchery video, you'll get it right. I mean, Chris, you, no. <laughs> no, no, don't do it. No, I'm just saying. You know, if you feel there's anything uncovered or you want something in more in more you know d diving deep manner. So uh, like we did with the terrain, just uh, drop it down, jump on Discord, reach out to us directly. Whatever you want to do, just do it. Um, and uh, for me, that completes the game mode series. Um, Daniel, do you want to add anything to, to, this, um, to this guide? No. I, I, um, yeah, let, let us know what you think about it. Um, we yeah. can also think about um, maybe playing something out, you know, um, cover things in detail as you said but other than that i think um this should be a good starting point for you exploring the game modes um yes uh, deeper and that's what we want to encourage you like we wanted to give you our advice on the game modes and make game modes um a vital part in 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 your experience uh, of the game and really think about it explore them um, find out which game would you like best and what strategies there are um, to, to win them and yeah. have fun with it. Cool. Martin, do you have anything to add to this? Yeah, just Daniel said uh, basically everything. Just when you have problems with some game mode, just try and try and try it and ask maybe other players, ask us if you have a hint here and there what you can do. And um, <clears throat> when, with time, with more games, you will get used to the game modes. And because no game mode is unwinnable for everyone, 
So just keep on practice. And if you want <clears throat> some advice, just let us know. We try to help as best as possible every time. Cool. All right. So that's ended. Uh, let, let, me, let me leave you with one final thing. Um, we would really like uh, to continue the series, continue this. Uh, please consider to like, subscribe us and jump on the Patreon page maybe to support us in the future. And uh, we will keep going, given our best to make uh, the best content we can come up with. So uh, until we meet again, there's just one thing to say for the final game mode guide. Roll. Those. Crits. Come for the hits and stay for the crits.